Welcome to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot, and today we're going to talk about something that everybody keeps harassing me about online, and that's me being a procrastinator. See all this? Well, that's a lie. Realistically, nobody really posts on my social media. It'd be great if you'd like this video, maybe subscribe, and then I won't have to do these awkward bits. Today we're going to talk about hard baits. Traditionally on this channel I have done soft plastic baits. I do a lot of 3D printing for the out of doors. That's kind of what I do. That's my thing. But uh, I want to try and transition into a little bit of hard baits. I really like northern pike fishing. Uh, that translates into musky fishing every once in a while. So I like to make bigger baits. I think that's kind of cool. So today we're going to talk about a popper I designed that's around like 7 inches long. Which is pretty big bait. 6.5 to 7 inches. It's a pretty long bait. We're going to talk about that, a little bit about how I designed it in Fusion 360, how I printed it, how I put it together, and then how I paint it. So um, I'm not a master craftsman at lure making yet, uh, really not. I do a lot of soft plastics, pretty comfortable in that realm, but I'm going to step into hard baits. So if there's anything throughout this video that you think I could improve, please leave it down in the comments below. That'd be great. I would appreciate it because I'll always take your advice and I'll try and make what I make better. So... Let's just jump into it. We're going to go into Fusion 360. I'm going to run through how I did this really quick. All right, so we're in Fusion 360 here. I'm just going to lay this out really quickly. I know this is very in-depth and very complicated to some folks. Uh, Fusion 360 is a little bit difficult to learn, but it is free if you're making under $100,000 a year. That's why I use it. I don't make anything on this channel, so it's just me using it as a hobby use, uh, personal use. I don't sell anything, so not too worried about that if you're in the same boat and you're just a hobbyist feel free to look it up at autodesk great program great uh cad work and if you're interested in this kind of thing please check out all the previous videos maybe subscribe to the channel because i do this quite a bit so all i'm going to do here is go through kind of how i set this up so uh a lot of this is based off of st hone if you're into 3d printing baits at all uh he's actually the person that got me into doing this I saw some of his baits on Thingiverse originally, printed them off, went, took them out to the lake, and they worked flawlessly first try. So that was kind of a bar I set myself to. So I wanted to try and kind of mimic what he was doing, and then ended up learning this stuff kind of as I go. He has a great video out there. I think he uses AutoCAD in that video, but the same principles can go into Fusion 360. So I will link that video down below if you're interested in it, but I'm going to use the same processes he used in his to do this. So basically what I'm going to do here first, this is the final product. I'll just show you that really quick, just so we know what we're kind of dealing with. This is a popper, it goes on the surface. When you pull it, this big gap here in the front, the line ties in the middle this big kind of mouth area pushes a lot of water and it thumps it out so what we're going to do is try and model this uh, from scratch I'm not going to do that all right now because it did take me quite a while to do this but I'll run through just kind of how I set it up to begin with so I did use a canvas I roughly based this on uh, I think this is a rebel pop R I think um, you can see this on the back. I put a canvas out here I scaled it up so I'm using the body kind of form of a rebel pop R but it's you know, it's going to be completely different because I don't have the top view or anything like that. So I basically, I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to cut it out of a block. So I have this all set up here. You can see I kind of set my own profile there on the top. I have a body extruded. Now, if you're kind of lost on this, uh, I do have some previous videos in the my backlog of videos that you could check out. So I set up this block body essentially with two profiles sketch one from the top one from the side i cut that out of the block now i have a square block there so all i'm going to do here is i'm going to set offset planes so set each of these offset planes it's very simple you just go in there you right click you say offset plane and then you can move it up i think for this bait what i did is set it to about i think 10 millimeters or so throughout this entire body then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in there and set a sketch for each one of those planes so essentially what it ends up looking like is this, right? So I'll take this body out of here. So I have these three and the canvas off. I have these sketches now set up on each one of those planes and you can see that. What I'm doing for those, each one of those is I have a section analysis set up. So I will put the body back on, I have my square body. There we go. 
for each one of these sketches I'm doing a section analysis and then I'm just going to run an ellipse into that section from the top and the bottom and that's going to round out my curves here it's going to make that to the body profile that I want and I got each one of these sketches set up inside and then you can turn that section analysis off, do it to the next offset plane, so on and so forth. So by the end of it, you have this nice profile of what you want, rounded corners, nice and easy. Then all I have to do is come in here and do a loft. I can come in, grab one of these, go to the next one, and so on and so forth, and on and on and on and on and on and on and on. You get the, you get the point, right? We'll just keep going on and on and on and on. That gives us a body profile. Then we can have that as a new body and we can work off of that. So that's where we establish our body and our shape, which is really nice. That ends up taking the square body into that rounded edges body, the ellipses themselves. Now we have a body that we like and set up. Let's just uh, get it there. So we have that rounded body. We almost have the profile the way we want it. Essentially what we're going to do is just make these sketches like how we want it on the side. So I wanted to add those gills in. All I did was take a side profile, put gills on where I thought it would be at in reference to the body. All I'm going to do then is push pull or press pull those into there because I wanted some depth onto the gills. You could also split the face, which is a easy way of doing it as well. But I just press pulled those into either side. What you can do then is you double up those, create a new body, then move them to the other side and cut them out of the original body. And then all you have to do is fill it the outside of those to make them kind of into the side there. To create the eye, then it's a very similar thing. I created a sketch where I wanted that eyeball to be. I made the eye a little bit larger than I really wanted to, and then I cut it out of this body. Then I just put in another circle, set that in there, and then I did a sketch to make the... I guess that would be the pupil of the eye. Cut that out as well. So it's just a formation of press pulls and cut operations to the body that I have already. So that's relatively simple, pretty easy. The problem I had with this was this mouthpiece. It's not exactly a circle, right? It's not exactly concaved. And you don't want it completely dug out in the center. Or it's going to create kind of a weird, like... It won't create good action when it pops through the water. Now, I'm going to be level with you. I haven't quite been able to test this out because all our lakes are frozen. I have done it in a small water bath test, and it works very well. It orientates itself. But what I wanted to do here was try and cut this out but still keep this lip brim around there. That's very difficult to do because it's not a complete, you know, it's not a perfect sphere. So what I did here was I created a sketch on this face facing forward and I just made an ellipse around this body that was pretty close to what I wanted then all I did was revolve this sketch created kind of like a, a spherical ellipse out of this and then I'm just gonna scale it up and down until it fits around the edge of this and I just wanted to give it just a little bit on each side so I could fill it that edge like you can see here that's all I did wasn't too difficult to do you just do non-uniform scaling to that ellipse because it'll be pretty close to where it needed to be there to begin with but then I just cut it in to where I wanted it and it turned out really well I'm pretty happy with how it worked didn't think it would work that well but it ended up working pretty well so now that we have this main body what we have to do is we have to split the body in half so the to do that it's very simple you just go in here you create a sketch split the body in half on that line and then what you ended up then what you end up with very simple you end up with two halves. There you go. So now we have two halves. Then all we have to do is come in here and we have to do a, uh, a wire path. So if I put the sketch back on, all I did was like, hey, where do I want this through wire to go? I'm going to run a spline. And you can see that spline there. Very simple. All one large line. And then I just click that spline, the spline. Went up the pipe, I set it to 2.0 millimeters, and then I just had it as a new body. So I set it to new body. And this is when both of these halves are still together, right? So these are one body itself. Then what I did is I just did a combine, had this cut out. 
Then what I can come in is do the split tool. So then after that's cut out, you can see that's where that is. So then all I did was do another sketch on this plane. You can just right click there, do an edit sketch. It starts a new sketch there. Then I just cut out spaces to uh, put lead weights to keep the buoyancy down. Because if you look at the profile of this bait, you can see that the widest portion of this bait is going to be what wants to float. So this bait's going to naturally want to... Hold on. Hold on. I'll show you. When it hits the water, it's going to naturally want to do that. That's how it's going to want to float. It's going to naturally want to float on its side instead of on its, you know, down like we want to, where the hooks are going to be down here. So it's going to naturally want to go like this just because that's the way surface tension works and that's the way life works. So what I needed to do then is to take this and create these cavities here for lead so we can weight down that, that middle section to where it sits level in the water. Seemed to work out really well. Glad uh, it worked out because I was a little fearful of it, but design worked out quite well. So, yeah, a little bit different than the traditional popper design too. Made it a little bit skinnier, actually made the back come up a little bit bigger, and then the mouth design's completely different because that's just off the cuff. How much will it work? Uh, how much water will it spread? That's a great question. We'll find that out this spring, so stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe. So that is how I made the popper itself in Fusion 360. I know that's a little bit lengthy. Thank you for sticking around if you're still here. After that, it's just a simple function of printing it out. I printed this one out on the ANET A8. I think I printed it out at 0.2 layer heights as well as 0.08. Both worked out pretty well. Printed it in PETG as well as PLA. Done quite a few iterations on this. I did a wider version as well, so in, and I just took the model after it was done and I scaled it out a little bit uh, left and right to make it a little bit fatter so it would stay in the water a little bit easier. Seems to work out pretty well. Going to be running 7 uh Mustad treble hooks on this. I like the bronze, don't really like the shiny ones, but you know, you got what you can get. I'm actually running 195 pound uh, tooth proof. American Fishing Wire AFW, I think it's called, something like that. I don't know. I'll put a link and a picture up. I'm running that on there. A little small, I think, for uh, larger fish coming in and hitting it. These are going to be for northern pike and muskie, so they're going to be coming at like 30 miles an hour cranking on this thing. But I'm going to give it a go and see if it works out. So that's basically it. It's pretty simple now. After you have the two halves printed, all I'm doing is I'm locking in the wire after I bend it up. I use a twist tech tool to bend uh, the wire. You don't need that. You can use wire bending pliers. It's very easy. That's also another limitation of some of my wires. The twist tech tool itself is only good to about that like 0.31 uh, or something uh, diameter, 031 diameter. After you bend that up, I usually secure that in with a, a, just a bit of CA glue and then some activator so it stays hold. It's in there. Then I'll put in my lead shot on either side of this bait, and I'm going to put it in. I'm not going to let it free fall at all, not in the cavity like a rattle, just because I need the weight to be in the lure itself. I need the weight to bring it down. Then all I'm going to do is put the two halves together, lock them in with CA glue there as well, and then I have one completed lure uh, with the line tie at the front and then the hook hanger on the bottom and the back. So seems to work out pretty well so far. Haven't had any major issues like with alignment or anything like that. And uh, overall, they're holding up pretty well just to the abuse of like me moving them around, throwing them around, testing them. So pretty happy with it thus far. The, the next step after that then is you got to paint these things. And uh, I'm not a professional painter in any way, shape, or form. Not really good with an airbrush. Uh, I mean, I'm competent, I guess. So I did a couple different variations with this. I like to do a dark back with a light belly just to mimic actual fish presentations. I do uh, scales with um, this stuff you put on your, you put it on your, like your cabinets for your cups. I don't know. We used it in fly tying back in the day to make eyes on like dub bugs and stuff like that. It's just like a foamy insert. Anyway, it's got a perfect pattern for scales. So I wrap it in there, do a nice little thin coat on that, some highlights in and around the gill plates on the eyes, just to give it a little bit of depth. But that's about all I know. 
not so much, you know. Stay tuned if you want to see me learn more because I don't really know what I'm doing. Airbrushing is going to be one of those things that hopefully I, uh, I progress at and get better. Hopefully. We'll see. Who knows? But then after it was painted, I wanted to have... Poppers traditionally have a nice, you know, a bucktail kind of tied on the end of the, the treble hook, kind of just tradition. So I figured I'd make some kind of feather tail for this bait. I hadn't tied up flies in quite a long time, but I ended up putting together something that I think complemented the bait pretty well. Ended up coating this in XTC 3D, which is a really smooth kind of epoxy. It has a very long setup time, which is really nice for this kind of thing because it'll free flow over something. It takes a very long time to set up. Problem with XTC 3D that I found is that it's a 3 to 1 epoxy, so it's a volumetric measurement, and that's very hard to deal with when you're down in the shop just wanting to get some stuff done. Uh, if you get it wrong, it takes like up to a week I've had this stuff take to set up on a lure, but at the end of it, it's very, very nice, smooth, bubble-free uh, finish. Overall, I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, given the circumstances. I don't know what to call this. If you have any ideas, you've made it this far in the video. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. You could stand my face for uh, this long, however long this is at this point. Uh, if you have any ideas on it, please let me know. Uh, if you're interested in this hard bait stuff, like just because I'm getting into this, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I made a couple things already. made a lure turner that's going to be uh, pretty integral into this stuff later on. I'm starting to set up an, uh, a UV carrying epoxy station because uh, everybody's doing that and it's much quicker. So I'm going to set that up pretty soon. So if you have any ideas or anything, please leave a comment down below. Let me know kind of what I need to start thinking about or doing. And uh, yeah, I'd appreciate that very much. So hopefully you found this entertaining in some way, shape, or form. Hopefully I didn't cut it down too much to where you didn't learn anything or leave it too long to where you got bored out of your gourd but if you did make it this far please consider subscribing maybe give a like to the video and uh there's more to come i got maybe three or four different hard baits in the works i have a whole tall tail series if you're interested in any of that please check out my instagram which will be plastered over my face right now if I'm not posting a lot on YouTube, I'll be on there. You can keep up with that. I got a lot of test videos and stuff in the bathtub with different lures. Working on a really cool one right now that's a bluegill pattern. That's a massive. So, yeah. That video will come out eventually. I promise. You know me. Yeah. So, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, whatever, throw it down in the comments below. And until the next one, keep your amps up and your filament dry.